these these books were not good. Don't you wanna have fun? Fool around someone. I think that's the nicest way I can say that. Most of these were not good books. My name's Tamika. This is Library of Tomes where I talk to you about all the bookish things going on in my life. And much like my life, these books were a dumpster fire. So let's just, let's just get into it, okay? I, I'm gonna preface this with, um, I am really trying not to just bash these books putting that out there. I'm just trying to not just just bash them, you know? And one of these I didn't hate. It just was disappointing. With that being said and that out of the way, let's talk about these books. Let's talk about DNF really quickly. I DNF'd Sacrifice by Jessica Godzilla. This was a witch paired with demons story. I was just bored. Just didn't care. I have nothing to say about this. I will probably come back to it later, but I was very disappointed because I really wanted to enjoy this one. I read this for Reading Like Heather. Uh, because she roasted our reading taste. I didn't like the books that she loved. So, Surprise by Jessica Godziella, it was fine. I mean, it wasn't because I didn't finish it, but like, it, I have nothing to say about it, you know? So, disappointing. Not a dumpster fire, just very disappointing. Next book that I want to talk about is another one that was just disappointing. I could talk in depth about books that I really hate so I'm not going to talk in depth about this one. This one is Immoral Confessions by R. Holmes. This one was a, I th I'm pretty sure it was like a bully college or high school book. Um, I, I don't even remember the plot. It was bland and we read it for the Tabo Book Club. Me and Naima neither one really remember much of it nor did we really care for much of it. I gave it three stars. It was just really disappointing because I had a lot of high hopes on this one and I just did not care. So let's talk about the books that I hated this year. Like let's let's talk about those because I think we'll be here for a little while. So so grab a snack okay. Um, First off we got Love Unexpected by QB Tyler. This was the first Taboo Book Club pick of the year. I'm sorry to everyone who read this book because of us. Um, me and Heather both roasted the shit out of this. We hated this book. Essentially we have our hero and our heroine and the heroine's mother dies. Um, and I'm pretty sure they have like less than a week of grieving this poor mother who dies and I don't even remember how she dies nor do I care how she died um, or how much time actually passed because it was not enough time to develop a romance with your stepfather. It was just pure smut and it didn't make any sense. Our heroine was a virgin and I don't have issues with a heroine that's a virgin but I do have issues with a heroine who has very rough sex the first time she has sex and has a fantastic time doing it because realistically that it doesn't feel good the first time. I don't know why that was done that way. I couldn't tell if the author was trying to make her a sex kitten or super innocent. She went back and forth a lot and I just don't understand how this 17 year old managed to get a tattoo and one nipple pierced while being underage. Uh, and honestly can we also just address the fact that I have an, an issue with people only getting one nipple pierced? I don't know it's just it's a pet peeve that I have in books. Like I understand real life. Just get one nipple pierced if you just want one nipple pierced. But the issue, like in books, like why are we only giving them one nipple ring? It it bothers me. It just really does not work for me. It's annoying. Like I just don't understand the purpose of just one nipple ring. I, that's a personal tangent. Um, but the thing with the nipple ring that bothered me the most, the hero flicks her nipple with his with his fingernail. And I don't know if y'all have ever you know had your nipples flipped or not. That hurts. It hurts someone who doesn't have their nipples pierced. So just think about it. A fresh nipple piercing. You ever had anything pierced before? Like think, let's, let's, let's drop it back to that. You know, like when you like are sore from any kind of piercing, like even if you've not had a piercing, you've not had a tattoo, like, you know how like if you like get a really deep cut or something, like it's sore for a while, like really sore and your nipples really sensitive. And it already hurts if you don't have jewelry. Why would you flick her nipple? It, it in this hair, the heroine was just all into it. And I'm like, I don't understand why you were, you, I understand there's, there's masochism. I understand we have masochists out there, 
but a fresh nipple piercing I don't really that doesn't really trigger masochism to me that triggers just irritating your piercing and making it reject I mean that's all it says to me um that's coming from someone who has had a lot of piercings in their life you can see one of them right here too actually uh and has had a lot of tattoos a lot of body modifications don't get it don't understand don't understand how she got them either I'm just I'm still trying to reel on that one we have a weird subplot in here with her dad and we have a weird subplot of her stepfather trying to like be a father figure and like he's very upset that her father says he's not a good father figure but he's you know screwing her so like I, it just felt like he couldn't pick like what 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 were you like are you her dad or are you her lover like pick one all right so uh we're gonna talk about another one that i i'm not gonna go on a tangent about because i do have a whole freaking review on this one uh and this is one i know you all were expecting me to talk about um so here we go credence by penelope douglas um this was a love quadrangle again i guess i don't know a love square of some kind uh, we have our heroine whose name i don't remember because it was very insignificant to me and then we have three heroes and uh her parents die so her mom and her dad die and she gets shipped off to live with her step uncle and her step cousin the issue i had was not in the taboo of this it was not in the in the relationship between the father and the and the and the you know the girl or either the brothers and the girl the issue i really had with this story was who she picked and the reasoning behind it and the way she reacted to everything um the way that our hero reacted to things um I, i'm really not gonna go into detail here i i could sit here and talk about this book for hours on end about how much i hate it i really could i just don't feel like this is the video to do that in when i've already done that um, so if you really want to know my full in-depth thoughts of why I hate Credence by Penelope Douglas um, and how this almost ruined Penelope Douglas for me, you can go watch my uh, spoiler review. It'll give you everything you need to know. I hated Credence. Let's talk about a, a one that was just a clusterfuck, if you want me to be quite honest with you. Satan's Affair. Just a clusterfuck. I, I still am processing this one. I'm still processing what happened. Um, this is a thriller, an erotic thriller. This is not a romance. Um, I was told this was a dark romance. It's not. It's an erotic thriller about this girl who has orgies with these, these men, right? Um, and she kills people. So she's a serial killer. And she's in this, like, haunted attraction. She stays in this thing. And she hunts down people that she believes are possessed with demons. Like, she could smell the demons in them, right? It's just weird. I couldn't tell you what was going on 95% of the time. I was beyond confused. And I can't tell you why I thought it was ridiculous without spoiling the entire thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that I thought the twist at the end of it was was honestly one of the dumbest things I've ever read in my entire life. Uh, it, it was, I'm still processing why it all happened the way it did. I'm trying to process like why the characters made the decisions that they made um the point of all of it like why things happened the way they did at all it was just nothing made sense and church agrees with me he didn't even read the book he agrees i can't even process this so i'm not gonna try to make you all process it either okay so hear me out on this one y'all remember how i read skeleton king by charity b and it was it was it was a ride right like it was at least entertaining it at least busted a slump. It was at least more than just a clusterfuck. You know, like, I mean, that's how I describe most of these books. It was more than a dumpster fire. Let's put it that way. There was, there was something there that was entertaining enough for me to hold on. R.I.P. by Charity, Chase Verity. Chase Verity? No, that's not even close. That's the deal with the demon lady. Charity B. This book, let me, let me just kind of like throw stuff at the wall really quickly and we'll, we'll just talk about it incest marital rape uh murders lots of murder um lots of incest so much incest between like the siblings the parents anybody you can think of absolutely just gruesome uh like violent for the sake of being violent lots of lots of smut for that was just disgusting 
lots, like so many graphic, graphic sex scenes that were just disgusting, honestly. I mean, so essentially we're following two, a brother and a sister. And the brother and the sister, there's also uh, mental illness in this. I'm pretty sure one of the characters is schizophrenic. Uh, and the mother was also schizophrenic. Uh, anyway, we have, oh, and we, and we eat someone. Someone eats a, a corpse in here. Uh, that's also in this. The family believes that they were given powers to kill the guilty. And that's what they do. And it's just, things just start happening. And it's just gross. And I, I don't, I, it, there's no redeeming qualities. None. Not a, re, not a single redeeming quality of the story. Like, I genuinely wish I could have got the time back that I read this. Because, like, it wasn't even entertaining. Like, it was just, like, a straight, what is this? Like, what am I reading? Why am I reading this? Yeah, I don't recommend it. I, I don't. And... If anyone wants to tell me that I should give Charity B another chance, your answer is no. Uh, that will not be happening. Um, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. So then we have The Shining by Stephen King, which I, I know we don't have to talk much about this. Because hear me out. I have been a very avid lover of Stephen King for a long, long time. I collect his Funko Pops. I collect the books. I have read over 20 some of the books and it wasn't until this year that I started looking at him in a new light uh, or in the last year and a half I kind of took a step back with Stephen King and like started to really analyze the books I was reading by him. The Shining was the first one where I came back I said you know what like I can I can recognize that he is a problematic author he does problematic things he has problematic things in his books still be able to enjoy those things but recognize that right and, and that's what I came back with the intention of doing I came back to reading his books with the intention of okay so I'm not going to support him monetarily anymore I won't be purchasing anything if someone gives me something as a gift that's a different story I'm gonna buy all books secondhand um I'm not going to you know contribute monetarily to Stephen King because honestly he doesn't need my money because he's probably a billionaire at this point or at least a, and he's at least a millionaire like he's he's very very wealthy he is not he doesn't need my money I still I still want to read his books I've learned that I I don't really know if I love his books anymore and The Shining is what kind of pushed me over the, over the edge on that one I read The Shining and I was like you know this could just be a dud like it could just be a one-off thing but the use of the n-word in this book was just too much like it was just constantly reoccurring, just the use of the N-word. And like, I just can't read that. Like, I listened to the audiobook, so it made it worse. But I just, if someone says the word, or mouths the word, or, or just, I have to like, see it, I just, it, it makes me cringe. I cannot stand it. I don't understand why that word is even still in the books. I know that this book was written in the 80s, but now that I've opened my eyes to it, like, I just can't unsee the racist undertones in his books. I can't unsee the racism in his books. I just, I can't do it. And this one in particular was really hard for me because I was just like, you know, I can recognize it and still enjoy the stuff and like, it'll be fine. But I don't know if I can anymore. Um, and that's really hard to say because I know for a fact that some of my favorite things by him are full of racism. And I didn't see it before. And... It's frustrating that it took like 20 some books in to figure that out. I don't want to talk about The Shining anymore. I don't know how much more Stephen King I will talk about on my channel. All right, so let's talk about Survive the Night by Riley Sager, which when I, when I tell y'all that my favorite thriller author is Riley Sager and the fact that this book is on my most disappointing list, I love Riley Sager. Y'all know this. Y'all know I love Riley Sager. He writes some of my favorite thrillers, but this one was just... A letdown in every way possible. I didn't like the twist. I didn't like the pacing. I didn't like the story. I didn't like our characters. I don't even remember what it was about. Genuinely don't even remember what the story is. Like it's forgettable. Not memorable in the slightest. All right and the last book on here I want to talk about. This one is just such a letdown because I loved the first book. Like loved it. You know like I loved it. And then I hated this book, and that is Lords of Wrath. 
This is the second book in the trilogy. I don't know. It's a reverse harem bully romance. Essentially, I did not give a shit about anything going on in this book because the premise of the first book that I was promised with like this this other situation, uh, it was just like, it was just more of the first book. No real development on like anything else. And I just didn't care. Uh, not necessarily that it was like horrible, but it was just so boring and so disappointing and I couldn't get through it. I just couldn't stay invested. I just didn't care. Just didn't care. So it's just, it just didn't work for me. That's why it's on the list. So those are all of the books that I read in 2021 that were either disappointing or just the worst. So if you're still here, leave me a fire emoji down in the comments and I will chat with you all in my next one. Bye everyone. Said that they don't got a future, future like that. It burns.